December the 8th, 2020. And as we uh, near the end of the year, it's always a time for reflection for me. And this morning I was just uh, studying in the, the book of Romans where Paul was just talking about righteousness. This past weekend, it, the sermon was about faith. So in Romans 1.1, 1, 1, it says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afford by his prophets in the Holy Scripture, concerning his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness, and by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to faith among all nations for his name, among whom are ye also called of Jesus Christ. To all that be in Rome, all that be in Rock Springs, beloved of God, call saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Paul was talking about was talking about Rome, a place close to him, a place that he called home, I guess, but he says, but in verse eight he says, I want to thank my God through the Lord Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. And you know, I would love to think I would love to think that our witness in Rock Springs, Texas has been of faith and of prayer. For verse 9 says, for, the, for God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making a quest if it, by any means now at, at, at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. That it's been a prosperous journey. It's been different than I expected. But we've had we've had some breakthroughs. And verse eleven says, For I long to see you that you may that I may impart unto you a spiritual gift. To the end you may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith both of, of you and me. Verse 13 says, Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oft times I purpose to come unto you, that I might have some fruit among you, also even as among other Gentiles. You see, the purpose of our lives is, is to make sure that we're not ignorant of the spiritual things that we're not ignorant, that we have fruit. In verse 14, it says, I am a debtor to both the Greeks and the barbarians, both to the wise, to the unwise. 15 says, so as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are in Rome. Rock Springs also. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and then also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Verse 18 says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness, unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which
may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it unto them. And for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen by understanding the things that are made, his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Verse 21. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were darkened. The beginning of unrighteousness is taking the, is knowing the truth, is knowing the truth of God, and living contrary to it God is not uh, God is not able to allow us that know the truth to live unrighteously it says here for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven you want to you want to encourage people to live their lives not afraid of God, but how do we get how do we get to the point of knowing clearly that God requires a holy and a righteous life and knowing that we're not living righteously, knowing that God's wrath is going to be poured out. It just, there's no, ex, there's no explanation except that, that we have come to the point. I think it's in the next verse here. Let's see. We become fools, but and in verse 23, it says they change the glory of, of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man and to the birds and the four-footed beasts and the creeping things. And here it is. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own heart to dishonor their own body between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator. That's the only explanation I have as to why we live so unrighteously. Why we can, we can have a form of godliness, but yet we live in, we live in darkness. We really, we take the righteousness of God and we live an unrighteous life. God help us. For, for verse 26 says, For this cause God gave them up into their vile affections. And as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over to a retrobate mind to do those things which are convenient. The last verse in Romans chapter 1 says this, Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, and not only do they do the same, but they have pleasure in them that do them. God forgive us in Jesus' name.